Bank outages, bank failures, and bank services down, the saga continues in America. This time it is Fifth Third Bank, a large bank in the Midwest, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, has been totally down last Friday. Seemingly every account shows a negative balance, meaning no card payments, no ATM withdrawals, or even branch withdrawals work. If you try to pay with your card, the card is declined for insufficient funds. This goes to show how quickly a major system can go down, with no real recourse for the average person. It stresses the importance of not carrying all of your eggs in one basket, and having at least one alternative that does not rely on any outside company or individual i.e. cash. This is happening through lunch time on a weekday, meaning many workers who do not carry cash or alternative cards are likely going without a meal. It's not cause for alarm, it's a genuine issue that we can prepare for. Being in a grocery store with a full cart of groceries and not being able to pay because your bank is down is an avoidable situation with some planning. Prepping isn't just about catastrophe. Always, always have a backup plan. That is why I have my savings divvied up in two accounts in two separate banks and have a thousand cash stowed away in case of emergency. Might not be gathering interest but at least it's there in case of emergency. Cash is also important to carry for the little disasters, like a weekend power outage, or the debit-credit connection at your regular grocery store being down just while you're there. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. At 1.35 p.m. Friday, the bank tweeted about the network issue and wrote, We are experiencing an issue with our network. We are working as quickly as possible to restore service for our affected customers, and we apologize for the inconvenience. Bank customers replied to the tweet and shared complaints and problems they've been experiencing Friday. By 2 p.m. customers had taken to social media, saying their cards had been declined and they were unable to log into accounts. Loads of comments on social media speaking about how even local branches didn't know what was going on and their phones wouldn't even work. Again, no recourse for the average consumer during this time. Customer service representatives, if you could even get a hold of one, just gave the same generic confused responses. Other comments on Reddit are claiming that this is not limited to Cincinnati. Branches in Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, have all confirmed they are not able to access the internet internally nor access customer accounts. This is not a local issue, it's a corporate level, national issue. Hope everyone closes their accounts as soon as their funds become available again, says one comment. VoIP phones and a web server that can't pull account info from the database. A lot of people think your bank account is just a number that shows how much is in it, but really it's a list of transactions that brought you to the current state. Maybe you deposited $5,000 in cash. You'd have a ledger that shows $5,000 in cash coming into that cashier's drawer, but you'd balance that cashier by showing another minus $5,000 that's a transfer to the account. So at the end of the day, you add up the transactions, and you have plus 5k, minus 5k or zero for that cashier. Your account just has the plus 5000, which also balances with the minus $5,000 the cashier had, so it shows 5000 in your account. If you later went back and changed the 5k in your account to something different, then it wouldn't balance the previous 5k the cashier had and you'd have a condition called out of balance, and it would be painfully obvious which record was the cause. They check for this every time a cashier leaves for the day, and they balance the whole bank at least once a day. When you want to see how much is in an account, you just add up all the pluses and minuses, and that's what's in it. The biggest screw-up that could cause something like this would be if someone tried to fix some kind of error and accidentally loaded a minus $100,000 transaction record for every account instead of just the one they want, but in that case, you'd have no transactions to balance all that out, so you'd just wipe all of them out and then find any accounts that happened to withdraw exactly 100 k at that time, most likely none, and figure out what they should be. Really not that big of a deal to fix because of the other checks and balances. But the other issue with this scenario is it wouldn't make all the accounts minus $100,000, it would make them 100 k less than what they had, so you'd see minus $95,000 for one and $1,259 for another that had $101,259. It just wouldn't make sense with what we're seeing. Odo, it could just be a case of defaulting to minus $100,000 if the database query returns an error. Not to worry. Your government will simply print the money you need to access and restore your account balances with just a few keystrokes. 
until you realize all fiat paper is worthless and that you are slaves in a system where your rulers and money creators do not have to do any work to live like kings. All corrupt banks are screwed up one way or other, one piece of advice, pull you money while you still can. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.